by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. More details of inappropriate sexual behavior against longtime NBC host Matt Lauer have emerged. I'm in Adoba, New York with the latest. And a Great Falls woman who led officers on a three-county high-speed chase appears in court. Coming up, how Gallatin County Sheriff says her actions endangered public safety. Good morning, thanks for joining us. I'm Missy O'Malley. As more details emerge about sexual misconduct allegations being lodged against NBC, some are wondering how big of a hit the network will take as a result of the scandal. CBS's Hen Adoba is in New York with our latest. As NBC lit the Rockefeller Christmas tree last night, more details were emerging about the most noticeable face not part of the broadcast. Earlier in the day, Today Show host Matt Lauer became the latest and arguably biggest celebrity to lose his job in the wake of a sexual misconduct scandal. Variety magazine and the New York Times reported the incidents with a staffer who came forward and lodged an official complaint began at the 2014 Sochi Olympics. They go on to report additional cases of sexual misconduct by Lauer, including exposing himself and sending explicit text messages. I think you can understand why the women felt like they couldn't come forward without facing repercussions for their career. The New York Times now says there are allegations from at least two more women. One claims Lauer sexually assaulted her inside his NBC office back in 2001. This is as big as it gets. It's the biggest um, scalp in terms of this national reckoning over alleged and in some cases uh, admitted sexual misconduct. In what seems like an ironic bit of foreshadowing, this is an interview Lauer did with Bill O'Reilly back when the Fox News host faced sexual misconduct allegations. You were the guy that the ratings and the revenues were built on. You carried that network on your shoulders. Lauer had been at the Today Show for 20 years and was one of NBC's highest earning personalities pulling in around $20 million a year. Hannah Doba, CBS News. Now, NBC insists that despite what has been reported, the woman who came forward on Monday night was the first such complaint lodged with a current management against Lauer. More details to follow on this as well. Yep. Hey, uh, looking at temperatures this morning, it is cold outside. I'm not looking forward to the Billion Auto Weather patio, I'll be quite honest. Temperatures are going to be cold uh, this morning, mo mainly holding into the teens. The good news is we don't have a lot of wind, so that's not going to be as big of an issue uh, talking about wind chill. Now we do have a little cloud cover trying to work its way in, so we'll probably stabilize these temperatures a bit for the next hour or so. We'll slowly warm up to the 30s for the afternoon, both east and west of the divide. But that cool air is going to stick around for a while. We're going to talk about the potential of snow as we get into the weekend. And that's coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Our top story out of the Treasure State for you here on your Thursday morning at 6.34. On Tuesday evening, a woman on probation from Cascade County hijacked a car in Helena at gunpoint and then led law enforcement on a three-county high-speed pursuit. 29-year-old Cindy Amesback appeared in Gallatin County Justice Court yesterday on her probation violation. Court documents say that she did not inform probation and parole officers about her address change when she moved to Butte. Now at this time, law enforcement is still investigating the high-speed pursuit that officers had to claim that Amesback will face more charges. She's currently being held at the Gallatin County Detention Center on a $100,000 bond. Now, this pursuit involved sheriffs from deputies and uh, sheriffs and deputies from Lewis and Clark County, Broadwater County, Gallatin County, along with Montana Highway Patrol troopers as well. MTN's Morgan Davies takes a look at these types of high-speed chases and the dangers that they pose for officers and citizens alike. That person's running from us. Our initial thought is uh, that person did something bad or is going to do something bad. Officers knew Sydney Amesback was armed and that was one of the main reasons the agencies pursued. It's also why deputies continued the pursuit through a populated area like Three Forks. So when they do stop them, they're taking the person out at gunpoint, they're making sure that everyone is safe, they're making sure that the public is safe um, and doing it, if possible, doing it in a safe area. Even with all their training and resources, Gukin says during last night's pursuit, the agencies found an area where they can improve. Broadwater County can't necessarily talk to our dispatch. Uh, Highway Patrol is talking to their dispatch in Helena, so it, it really does become a cluster. And that, that's one of the things that we debriefed yesterday and talked about. 
Um, you know, one of the things that we're going to try and fix uh, with our local radio system is make sure that we're, we're integrated and that we're all working together. In addition to this radio fix, the Sheriff's Office is looking into a way to make sure the public has adequate information during these types of pursuits. So we are working, the Sheriff's Office is working on, uh, with, along with our DES person, to uh, do a social media uh, immediate, even if it's not done yet, just to give an update. Finally, Gukin wants to remind people to make sure they are locking their vehicles to avoid car thefts. In Three Forks, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now Morgan tells us neither law enforcement nor the suspect was injured in the pursuit. And Montana State Revenue Director of Federal Tax Cuts says proposals before Congress could negatively impact the current state budget by as much as $30 million. Revenue Director Mike Cadis outlined his concerns in a memo this week to the governor's budget office. He told MTN News that the proposed Republican tax cut bills probably will increase state individual income tax revenue. Now, this is because it eliminates deductions that state taxpayers can take. He says two other components of the bill will certainly reduce the ta taxes revenue and more than offset the increase. Now, the bigger tax write-off for corporations and a $23 million cut in federal mineral royalties paid to the state, Caddis also says that he doesn't believe tax cuts will create enough economic growth to offset their huge cost to the national and state treasuries. We have big concerns about the overall effects of what they're doing. I mean, they're essentially financing tax breaks with deficit spending. You know, we fundamentally disagree with that notion. If you do do it, the only time you should do deficit spending is when, you have, when you're trying to combat a recession uh, situation like that. That is certainly not the case. I mean, the country's at full employment right now. Now, Caddis also says it's difficult to truly gauge the impacts of the bills because they're being advanced so quickly. And the Montana State Fund will withdraw its lawsuit against the state over a $30 million charge on the fund's investment holdings. Yes. The fund's director of uh, board of directors voted 5-2 to two on Wednesday afternoon to pull out of the lawsuit. During this month's special legislative session, lawmakers approved a temporary management fee in some state funds investments as a way to help fill Montana's budget shortfall. But the fund's president argued that the state fund money can't be transferred for other purposes. So the charge is illegal. Now, during the meeting, a number of business owners called on the board to continue its lawsuit. They argued allowing the transfer would encourage the legislator to take more money from the fund in the future. But board members who supported ending the suit said moving forward with it would have been too risky. I don't see how now we can say we have plenty of money um, to work over $30 million for uh, other than the policyholders. I don't believe this legislation creates the kind of emergency situation that warrants um, the risk that we fight this battle of groups. Representative Greg Hertz of Polson was among those who testified in favor of continuing the lawsuit. After the decision, he said he expects a group of the state fund policyholders to bring the separate suit in the next few weeks. And bison managers between 600 and 900 of the animals at the Yellowstone Park could be culled by the winter season by hunting or slaughter. Federal, state and tribal officials on Tuesday worked out the details for the winter management plan. Park officials estimate there's nearly 5,000 bison in the two park herds. Park biologists say that the removal of 600 bison would keep the population relatively stable, while removing 900 might lead to a slight decrease. Interagency agreement calls for a population of about 3,000 bison and limits where the animals are allowed to roam in Montana. More than 1,200 bison were removed from last year's winter season to be shipped to slaughter. And Northwestern Energy held a forum in Butte on Wednesday morning to examine its energy efficiency and future energy supply. Now, the Butte-based Montana utility invited experts to discuss various alternate energy sources that included wind, solar, and even geothermal energy. Forma, forum also addressed how it would use coal and natural gas in the future, as well as serving customers through batteries and pump storage supply. Some of these technologies will probably be a little cost prohibitive, but um, as we've learned today, you know, costs of uh, renewables are coming down, costs of batteries are coming down. Um, there is a potential at some point in the future where these will become cost effective and they will be added to a portfolio. 
Northwestern is required to hold these public forums as it develops its business portfolio, which will outline the utility's future over the next 20 years. It is a quick break here on Montana This Morning. Here's a quick preview on what's ahead. It was one of the most active and expensive hurricane seasons on record. I'm Courtney Zabowski along the Texas Gulf Coast, where the end of the 2017 season is being met with cautious relief. This morning, President Trump's retweet of anti-Muslim messages leads to a new feud with Britain's prime minister. And we'll hear from two of the more than 220 women in the national security community who signed an open letter about surviving sexual misconduct. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.